Today we're talking about pools. Are they important? Well, kind of. So today I'm gonna to do a quick review of the Vocal Fanta Stick. When you're looking to buy a ski pole, there's really three main components. The first one being what kind of material you're looking at, and that'll kind of indicate what the price category is for it. And then the second one is the basket. Uh, what are you gonna use it for, and uh, what are you kind of looking for, what purpose is it looking to serve? And the third one is the handles. One, I like carbon poles because they're a little bit lighter. Now, I would say if you're skiing under 30 days a year, the material really doesn't matter. The extra weight doesn't really add up much. But if you're skiing a lot and you're skiing hard, sure, I like a little bit lighter pole and they've been able to make these a lot more reasonably priced than they used to be. It used to be that carbon poles were a couple hundred dollars. Now they're about half that. So really, if you're looking for a nice lightweight pole, I like the carbon. The next step is to move on to what kind of basket do you want? The best way to figure that out is what are you doing? If you're a backcountry skier, right, and you want that really wide pull, that's gonna give you a lot more um, kind of leverage when you're going into the snow. It can spread out that weight, and it's less likely to sink through the snow. If you're a racer, what you're gonna want is a really narrow basket. And the reason for that is that you basically don't want a lot of things that it can get hung up on. So when you're going really close to the gate, you want this to be able to kind of scrape by and you don't really need it for deep powder. You really just don't want the basket to pop off. Now, the handle portion of a pole is totally personal preference. It really has a lot to do with your hand shape, your hand size, what you like. What I tend to like and look for, I learned when I had the Swix ski poles, is I like this kind of long trigger here. Um, and then, you know, kind of a nice firm grip here. But I really like this because it kind of keeps my hand in the right spot when I'm turning. Um, and I also look for kind of looser ski straps because I don't like it being really tight to my hand. I like to have a little play so I can reach through and go here. You can get even more into the woods. Like Leaky has a uh, like a trigger one where it goes directly under your glove. I think that stuff's totally overkill and I really don't like it that much. I like a nice loose strap where I can just reach through and grab it directly. And especially like I like snowboarding gloves. I like to have a good firm grip on my pole. Here for contrast, you can see my wife's Scott pole. See how it's got kind of a tighter strap to it? And then also, it doesn't have as much of a trigger here. This handle's a little more freeform. It doesn't really like conform to your hand as much. And for some people, I think they like that. They don't like to grip their handle as like kind of firmly as I do. And that's again, a totally a personal preference thing, but I've never really liked the Scott or Smith poles. Just for whatever reason, they didn't really match up with my hand type. So I'll kind of give you these to, as a comparison so you can see the different handle types. So back to the vocal fan stick. For reference, I'm six foot one. I got a 120 centimeter, right? Which obviously is not following the charts, but I think the charts are wrong, so we'll just go with that. But what would I give this pole for a rating? Now, poles are a little different, right? You gotta rate them differently than skis. Um, but these are actually the my favorite poles I've owned since the Swix Mach CT1, back with the slalom poles when they had that little yellow trigger. I would give these, honestly, a nine out of 10. I think these are great. I love the handle. I love the carbon material. And I love the shape of these baskets. It's the perfect blend of width so that when you're in the powder, you can get where you need to go, but also being kind of smooth enough that it's not getting ripped off every time you're car carving on the hard pack. I love these poles, nine out of 10, easy. Maybe even closer to a nine and a half out of 10. I love these poles. I'm not gonna give them a perfect score because I didn't. I don't think they're very like innovative. They haven't really changed anything. A perfect pole would be like the old mock comp CT1 slalom pole because those really changed the game of what a pole could be and what a hand grip could be. But man, these are the best ski poles that I've owned. So who are these for? Really, anyone who's riding a chairlift. They're really good in the powder. Uh, they work great on the groomers. They're not gonna get the baskets ripped off them. You can also traverse through the powder well. I think that these are the best all around pull you could get and probably the best value you can get. So yeah, Vocal Fantastic. I've never seen Vocal really make pulls, so yeah, that's my rating, nine out of 10. Oh, that's the sprinklers, I gotta go. Sprinklers turned on to me, oh my gosh. Yeah, so the Vocal Fantastic. I gave these a solid nine out of 10. I really like these pulls. I think that they do a lot. They're nice and light good hand grip, but like I said, poles are not the most important piece of gear you need to buy. Um, so yeah, really low priority. But if you're somebody who skis a lot, like over 30 days a year, yeah, go ahead and get these. They're really light, nice and comfortable grip. These are really well made. I've never known Vocal for making poles, but hey, these are great, I love them. So yeah, when it comes to poles, 
Not the most important thing, but there are a few tips that you can follow to get something that really fits you well. One, get it shorter than you think. Like I said, I'm six foot one and I'm on a 120. The chart would have me on like a 125 or a 30. Just take five centimeters off of whatever the chart's recommending you. Another thing I see people go out and do is they get the big backcountry poles. You know the ones I'm talking about where they are extendable, they have the giant baskets. Unless you're skiing backcountry, if you're skiing on a chairlift on any kind of groomed runs, or even honestly in the woods a little bit, you don't need that kind of pull. That's really for a big backcountry skier when they're skinning up. Most people, this kind of pull is perfect. So get the pull that really suits your need, not just kind of the novelty or the image you're going for. And this is my hottest take, don't fall for bamboo poles. They don't serve any purpose. That bamboo we used to use in old ski gates, it's brittle, it breaks. I would not buy a bamboo ski pole. Now, believe it or not, there's actually a ton of controversy about how to use your ski straps. Some people believe that you need to put your hand through, loop it around, and then have the strap in between your thumb and your index finger. And that makes the pole a little thicker. I have heard that that's wrong. This is totally in the weeds and just people's personal preference, but what I prefer is I reach just through the strap and onto the handle. And that gives me a lot more room and it feels less restrictive on my wrists. Okay, so now here's a question I would get all the time back when I was a racer, and I'm gonna try to illustrate it for you here. People all the time would ask, what does the bend in the race poles do? Or, hey, did you know your poles are broken? Very funny. But let me show you. So if I'm going down and I'm in a tuck, maybe you can see it better this way. The bend in the pole actually wraps around my waist and allows me to get into position. And what that does is it makes it more aerodynamic and it also makes it more comfortable when I'm in a tuck. That way my poles aren't sticking out here, they're not catching wind, and I can get into that low tuck. So that's what the bend for these GS poles are for. For an everyday user, do they do anything? No, absolutely not. For a GS skier, do they really do that much? Not really, they're more comfortable in a tuck for sure, and I guess they're more aerodynamic, but really, <laughs> there's a lot more time to be made up than your poles. So lastly, here's a question I get a lot when I go and volunteer over at the ski swap. Elliot, should I buy race poles? Is there an advantage to having them? And the answer is no. I own race poles, God knows what reason. But I own race poles and I hate using them. I would much rather be using these Volco Fantas or any other kind of recreational pole. Like I said before, the baskets don't work as well if you're going off trail. Um, the I really don't like the way that the pole plant works when you've got this kind of bent pole. No, if you're not a racer, don't buy race poles. It's totally unnecessary. It provides no extra value and it honestly is just built for a different purpose. All right, now let's read some questions and comments. All right, John Kieran says, I feel like he's trolling for views. I would never give those skis to beginners, but I guess that's why they make chocolate and vanilla. That was a comment on the Nordica Enforcer video. Well, that's funny. Yeah, uh, I think everybody's entitled to their own opinion, and especially if you like the Nordica Enforcers, that's awesome. I have no problem with people liking skis. Hey, maybe it was just the pair I tried, maybe it's just the day I was skiing on them. You know, it's hard to be 100% uh, in tune with what everybody's gonna ski like. I know for my ski style personally, I guess my bigger point with Nordic Enforcer and the reason it got such a mediocre score, because again, it got like, what, a five and a half? It's still slightly above average. But what I'm more trying to get to the point of is when I'm loading up the ski, changing the shape, and then releasing that energy, I should be kind of sprung forward. Or I should be able to get that energy back out of the ski to complete the turn. And with the Nordic Enforcers, I wasn't getting any of that energy back. Now, to be fair, I was also very critical of the Atomic Bent 100s for that exact same reason. So it's, I'm not just picking on Nordica. Both of these skis, and Nordica to a more extreme extent, but both of these skis weren't giving me my energy back out of the turn. And I don't think there's any reason for that. I think that that's what's really fun to me in skiing. So yeah, thank you for the comment and I appreciate it, but just trying to clarify and that's really what I'm, the heart of what I'm being critical of. And you know, that just goes to show, I have no brand favorites. I'm gonna be critical of everyone. My favorite ski of the year, Atomic Maverick. Also, Atomic made the Atomic Bent 100, which was one of my lowest rated skis. So really, I'm just looking for good skis. I don't have any brand loyalty or really even care about any of that. I'm just out here trying skis and letting you know what I think. And for some of these skis, it's like, man, there's no excuse for this. There's no reason skis shouldn't have pop and, and kind of um, that fun 
turn shape and turn initiation. So yeah, now you know a thing or two about poles. Uh, thanks so much for watching everybody. If you'd like to leave a comment about your kind of favorite poll, I'd love to check them out and see what else is out there. Um, hit the bell, like and subscribe, all that. I really appreciate it, it helps me a lot. So thanks so much, see you in the next video.